Johannes. There aren't many men I would travel halfway across the country for, but <laughs> here we are in Cheltenham oh. because you're coming to Scotland with the house of Jojo. It has been so exciting creating this house, this beautiful home, but with Scotland, it's different, isn't it? It feels like I'm a rock star. <laughs> You're like, I've arrived. <laughs> <laughs> they make me feel good. They remind me very much of my own people back home in South Africa, you know? They respond and they are just not, they don't hold back. Yeah. And that's what you want from an audience, isn't it? So it always feels like a party when I'm, down, when I'm up there, honestly. We don't want to give away too much, but yeah. what are we going to see from House of Jojo? This house is created to bring joy and laughter, and it encourages love. I want people to come into this theatre and have a boogie walking out. And that is what theatre is all about, isn't it? Just to create a little bit of escapism for people, just for two hours, to feel like they've had the best night out is all that everybody needs. Going back, to when you were a little boy. Mm -hmm. I love this, that it wasn't just the dance that drew you in. First of all, it was a sequin tail coat, is that right? Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me about Absol that moment. <laughs> oh, my first experience with Bormel Latin, this is the thing. We all gathered at this recreation hall in my township in South Africa. And the aim was to get us away from the streets and give us a little bit of focus and discipline. They demonstrated a waltz for us and they got into their full attire and I remember walking up to him afterwards and saying how do I get to wear that jacket and he said to me if you come here and you learn how to dance one day you'll be able to wear it and I held on to that dream and those words for a long long time. And did you wear it? I did <gasps> and I wear it in my show now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so special. Absolutely. That's so lovely. Growing up was tough. Yeah. And you left home at what age were you, 13? I was 13. Oh I was 13 when I left home to go out into the world and seek a better life for myself. Yeah. Because like I said, you know, the township was quite stifling for a flamboyant boy like me. And I, I, I remember got into that train and never looked back. And I've always known that my life was never gonna be in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I felt like what I had was worldly. It was never easy that as well because I had to sleep where I could sleep. It was not fun, but it was having to persevere through all that adversity that honestly gets me here. And it's pr I'm proud, I'm proud to tell the story now. After all these years, I'm in a position now to look after my family and comfortably. Yeah. And that has always just been also, you know, the dream. You took part in Strictly South Africa. And was it your mum was saying that you used to sit and judge everyone and she was like, for God's sake, get on that show. Or... <laughs> I did, I criticised. I was like, oh, he could have done that better or she could have done that better. And mum being mum, and I thank her for, for, for saying that to me because she said, well, you know, you stop talking and you stop criticising and get yourself there. And if you can't, then keep quiet. <laughs> that really hit hard. But... It was lovely to call her back that one day and say, I've got the job. It was a couple of years later when I said to her, I'm moving to the UK because of this dancing thing that many people have doubted and yet you encouraged. Yeah. So she watches it like a hawk and she's the one now criticizing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I mean, it was funny now the other day she said, oh, you know what? When Craig decides to leave, you should take his position. I was like, mommy, it was lovely to hear mom be so you know, so positive and so involved around it. It's just beautiful because that's actually the whole family now. They yeah. all sit down and they watch. Would you like to be in that judging seat eventually? I think that would be an honour <gasps> of which I would happily, happily accept. I would speak from experience mm -hmm. and it is, it is the greatest thing to be part of that magical world. You would be the best. Ah. Let's make that happen. I'm going to campaign. Please. Thank you. Please, Laura. Jojo please. for judge. That's it. You've had some monumental moments that will go down in Strictly history. Yeah. The John Waite stuff. I mean, that the Pirates of the Caribbean sticks in my mind, sticks in everyone's mind. I mean, yeah. How special was that whole time? It touched a lot of people. A lot of people felt seen because of the moment. My faith in humanity was, was, was restored after seeing how people poured into me and John. And for the fact that we got to the finals of the biggest show on telly, that said to me, stop it with the shame, Johannes. Yeah. 
I imposed it on myself. You know, the, the way I looked at myself changed. There was a sense of confidence that it has given me. How's your Highland fling? How is my Highland fling? Is this a Highland... Scottish dance? <sighs> I must teach you. Laura, please. <laughs> We might have to book a class and go in there okay, quickly. Okay, we can do it. I'll get Please. you a kilt. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> start. Out. You just have to do this. Can you do this? Oh, so that is what I'm. That's okay. It. You're one of us. You we're just sorted. said a kilt, right? A kilt, yeah. You'd like that? There's a surprise for you all. <gasps> oh my goodness! <laughs> I've been thinking about you. I have. Get me in that front row. <laughs> I am there. <laughs>